Hey, welcome to Fit Lab Daily. So today we're going to talk a little bit about sleep problems and how your cortisol and insulin levels affect your sleep. So let's just start by breaking down what are these two hormones and what do they do. So if we take a look at cortisol, cortisol's main job is to increase your blood sugar during times of stress. So this includes mental and physical stress. So working out is a type of physical stress that's going to increase your cortisol. Having um, fight with your boss or spouse or anything like that will increase your cortisol and chased by a dog that you're scared of. Um, it's like a fight or flight response. So that's your increased cortisol. And insulin's main job is to decrease your blood sugar and it gets released when we eat. So when we eat, especially when we eat carbs, it causes your blood sugar to increase. So your body then secretes insulin to bring it back down so your blood sugar is fairly stable. So how do these two hormones affect sleep? What we want to think about is cortisol's natural cycle is it's the highest at 5 a.m. and it's lowest at the nighttime before sleep. If this gets messed up for some reason, whether it means you're in a chronic state of stress or your diet isn't regulated and you're eating too late or too many carbs or sugary or even alcohol at night, what's gonna happen, so say you eat a big meal at night, your body now is gonna secrete a lot of insulin, especially if you eat a lot of carbs. And sometimes what happens is your body just secretes too much insulin, more than it's needed, and now cortisol kicks in to come in and correct this. Because remember, these two hormones work inversely. So now you increase your cortisol throughout the system. And that will keep you up at night. Um, we, cortisone is a stimulating hormone, which is why it's gonna keep you up at night which is why also it comes up in your fight or flight response. And cortisol's sister hormone is adrenaline. So we've all heard of adrenaline. Uh, it's like what, you ever hear of a grandma lifting a car up? That's what gets released. Adrenaline's gonna make you more alert. It's going to make your nervous system communicate to your muscles better and more efficient. And it's gonna allow you to use that quick explosive strength. Uh, it also stimulates you and keeps you awake. So if we have some adrenaline floating around at night, this is when we're laying down and we're physically tired, but our minds are still racing. Uh, and a way to combat that is to have a diet. Hold on, let's get this up. Fresh off the board here. So we want to have a diet that is high in fiber, low in sugar, and we want to monitor how different foods affect our sleep. So if you're someone who can fall asleep no problem, but you're waking up a lot throughout the night and then maybe have a problem falling asleep, that could mean you actually may need a small amount of carbs in your dinner. Now normally we talk no carbs in dinner, but that's once your hormones are regulated. So sometimes we need to regulate our hormones first and then go in. So if you have low blood sugar, what's gonna happen is throughout the night we're in a fasted state and cortisol is what is keeping you able to, it's keeping your heart going, it's keeping everything moving even though we're getting no energy coming in. So if this, if you go to bed with a low blood sugar, your body is now going to release adrenaline. Release adrenaline, and that's going to wake you up, and you're going to feel a little anxious, and you're going to have trouble falling if Your mind's going to be racing. So how do we combat that? We need to get a little insulin into the system from carbs, and now insulin. Remember, they have this reverse relationship. We'll bring your cortisol level down. And I'm not talking about going and eating um, you know, like a whole bag of chips or a, a big carb, and then you're gonna get the opposite. I'm talking a small amount. 
and even like an apple, um, some vegetables, Pizza so beans. things like that. So again, what we're looking at is we want to try to have our blood sugar fairly stable throughout the day. And that's going to affect our sleep. So it's something to play around with. If you're having trouble sleeping, pay attention to your blood sugar levels and maybe even go and get your levels checked out. There's various tests you can do that will test your cortisol all throughout the day. And check it out. See if you can sleep better from that. That's it.